Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about how do you load any GDF model into LMware. Um, so those who've been following um, some of our videos, we have a number of videos on GGUF, um, how we implement and support it in LLMware, how we've actually quantized some of our own models in the Dragon series as an example, some of the default GGUF models that we bring into our catalog, as well as how you connect with some popular GGUF client interfaces like Olama and LM Studio. But what if you have a custom GGUF model, or what if there's a model that you see, you've discovered, it's something that you want to start bringing and integrating into your model catalog and into your workflow? How do you do that? Well, that is the topic for today's video. So what you see behind me on the screen, this is from Hugging Face. It is probably the best place overall to discover and look for GGUF models. And the best place to start also is with the bloke. Again, for those who don't know, we mentioned bloke quite a bit. We're big supporters and fans of his. He has actually been going out and really trying to quantize as many models as he can, really be a popularizer of formats like GGUF and other quantization techniques that really help to democratize and make some of these open source models more widely widely available. We're looking at a repository from the bloke. He's the organization behind it. The model name then, this is the Llama 2 13 billion parameter chat model that has been GGUF quantized. And the first place to look whenever you discover one of these repositories is at the files. Unlike a lot of other Hugging Face repositories where the underlying transformers library picks up the PyTorch model and any of the associated deliverables, typically then when you look at one of these file repositories, all those files are interconnected and required for deploying a model, the GGF repositories are a little bit different. In this case, each of these GGF binaries are actually logically and physically independent of each other. In fact, they're really each representing a different implementation of this model in terms of different levels of quantization. So just to get you get oriented to this, if you haven't looked at these before, this is 2-bit, 3-bit, 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 4-bit, 5-bit, 6-bit, and 8-bit. The reason that you see, for example, with 3-bit, 4-bit, and 5-bit, three different versions, these are just slightly different quantization algorithms grounded around, let's say, 3-bit quantization, but then how it handles some parameters is slightly different. So some parameters aren't stretched all the way down to 3-bit, they're kept a little bit larger. Um, that results in some of these variants around it. But each one of these GGUF models is actually a self-contained executable. Everything that you need, if brought together with an underlying Llama CPP engine to actually run inference and to execute on the model. So all you have to do typically is um, pick the one that you want and download it. Typically in LLMware, where we've had the best experience is with the Q4KM. You'll read there's a lot of conventional wisdom that 4-bit quantization is sort of the best trade-off in terms of quality, not losing that much in quality, but then I'm getting a lot of really great memory compression. Olama tends to use the Q4-0. Again, they're probably fairly similar. You can see the Q40 is slightly smaller. The KM is slightly larger. They're both gonna give fairly similar results. In this case today, what we're actually gonna look at is because a 13 billion parameter is still pretty large to be pulling and running on a local machine, we're actually gonna stretch this as far as we can go. So we're actually gonna use the two bit parameterized version of Llama 213B. What we're gonna show you in the course of the example is actually how easy it is to download this, instantiate in your model catalog, and start running inference with this model. Let's flip over and let's start to look at the code. And the code really could not be simpler. Where it starts is registering the GGUF model in our model catalog. This really is the one key line of code. In this case, the key parameters that we need, the rest are largely you know, boilerplate that can be handled in automatically creating the configuration and the implementation of the model. But the four parameters that we need are the model name, the GGUF model repository, which is actually the name that we were just looking at in Hugging Face, the GGUF model file name. And again, that was the list that we were just looking at. And as I mentioned, we're gonna take the Q2, the two-bit quantization, the smallest version of this model, and then the last parameter requires a little bit of explanation. It's the prompt wrapper. Anytime these models are fine-tuned, to get any type of instruct capability or chat capability, there's typically a special token that's used, oftentimes at the beginning, the end, sometimes in the middle of a prompt. And it's important that you wrap the prompt with those special tokens to get the right behavior out of the model. Now, as many people know, you know, Meta created this inst command in this case, the model follows an inst command. We could simply say that the prompt wrapper is inst, but we wanted to use this as an example just to illustrate how easy it is to create and register a new fine-tuning wrapper. 
So if you've gone out and you've created your own model, your own fine tuning version, let's say of this model, and maybe you've used a slightly different variant of this prompt wrapper um, in the fine tuning that you've done, this is a way that you can quickly register that. Now in this case, we're gonna create literally our own version of inst, which is gonna be an identical version of the meta prompt wrapper. And again, it's as simple as a one line of code in which we're gonna register, in effect, a couple of special tokens that the templating engine is gonna pick up anytime it's instantiating the model. And in this case, it's as simple as at the very start, put this inst token, put the exit inst token as the signal for the LLM to start with its prompt, its side of the dialogue, if you will. We register that, and then once we've done that, we can use this model anytime we want within LLM or simply by invoking the name. In this case, again, to be very clear, the model name is anything that we want it to be. The key parameters here for instantiating the GGUF model are these two, which basically tell us where to go find it in terms of the Hugging Face repository and what specific model file we actually want to draw on. Those are the key location variables that we need to pull in the right thing and to cache it locally and to be able to instantiate it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna load that model. We're gonna go through three standard kind of hello world-ish kinds of questions that we use, kind of open-ended types of topic framing sorts of questions. as a way just to test the 13 billion parameter two-bit quantized chat model. We're just gonna simply loop through that. And there we go, a couple lines of code. We're identifying and registering custom GGUF. We're creating a custom fine tuning wrapper. In this case, it happens to be identical to the Llama one. And then we're off and running and running some inferences on it. And now here we go as we run this example. A couple things I'll sort of quickly call out. The first is you'll notice when we registered the model, it actually threw a little warning to us. And the warning is that we use this custom wrapper but we hadn't defined it. And so the warning that it's giving us is you haven't created this custom wrapper. If you don't create it, it might lead to some unpredictable results. And if you've ever tried prompting a model using the wrong wrapper, you know what I mean. Sometimes it leads to very unpredictable results because the model has really been fine tuned to look for those special markers as the way to elicit the right kind of behavior. So in this case, it's giving us that warning. That warning goes away once we actually register our fine tuning wrapper. And now we're actually instantiating it with the uh, registered model and with the correct fine tuned wrapper that we've applied. Now, one quick thing, um, as we get the first query in, an important thing to note, 13 billion parameters parameter model is a lot slower than the 7 billion parameter model. You'd expect that, it's twice as big. But even going to a two-bit quantization, the two-bit quantized 13B is still slower than the four-bit 7 billion parameter model. About 50 seconds, as we go through the second and the third question, you'll see probably 40 seconds to 60 seconds to generate a paragraph length answer. It's at least two to three times slower than what we've seen out of a 7 billion parameter model. At least in our experience, we believe the 7 billion offers the better bang for the buck. The accuracy, the quality of the output is virtually identical, but we see a lot of benefit then in terms of smaller memory footprint and certainly the speed and the performance of the inference. But this is something, again, we wanna make it as simple as possible. We're actually sharing this script in our repository. You can go in, cut, paste, and run, and start running some of your own experiments using a Llama 2 13 billion parameter chat model or any GGF model that you can find in a Hugging Face repository. So we hope you've enjoyed today's session. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more exciting stuff coming up over the next few videos, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, everyone.